And joining me now from Shanghai is Alize Buskar. She's the founder of Zero Waste Shanghai, a group that works with individuals and organizations to help reduce waste in the city. And Alize, I first want to ask you to tell us about what you call the five R's. Good morning. So the five R's in uh, Zero Waste are refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. And they do follow that order as well. Um, yeah, they all aim at reducing waste before actually recycling it. And how do those play out? Why this specific order? So it's so basically first we should refuse what we don't need. Uh, it's the first step towards uh, like getting less waste. Then we have to reduce what we do need because we all need things. We need clothes. We need phones. We need to be able to live. So the second step, that's why it's, it's, in, it's in seconds. The third one is to reuse, uh, reuse what we, what we already have. Recycling comes only fourth because un, up until this July, only 10% of the Shanghai waste was being recycled. So recycling is not the solution. Um, and then lastly, rot is to rot your food uh, because first of all, we should not waste food. But uh, yeah, rot comes at, at the complete end of the five hours. Is and this order is important because if people think that recycling should come first, then people are not going to take the effort of reducing first. Indeed, here in the U.S., you said recycling is fourth. Uh, often it's the only R that people talk about. Is that perhaps culturally different than what we see in China or what's happening? Recycling is the easiest, honestly, to, uh, to get started with because we don't want to change our habits. We don't like to change our habits. Therefore, recycling for people is the easiest because it doesn't require much more efforts in changing their habits. That's why it's the most popular one. However, um, that's always the first step towards a change of lifestyle, and then people go and follow and the, the other R's. In China, you know, we're really seeing uh, the government set the tone here, a, a top-down approach, if you will. So what role is there? for groups like yours now in Shanghai? For us, this is a huge opportunity. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, we've always been struggling about with recycling and uh, everything else. And so now, finally, because thanks to the government and the incentive, especially because um, there's a big incentive from the government, there's fines being imposed. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, for us, it's a, it's a big step upwards because people now have to change. And the things that we sometimes fail to understand is that it's for the common goods, and yes, it will come through a, a messy period of time, but for organizations like us, we're very, very, yeah, we're, it's a big step, it's a big thing, it's a big opportunity. And I, I wanna ask you, do you think this Chinese model, this top-down approach could really work elsewhere in Asia and even in the West? I don't know about the West. It's a completely different way of functioning. Uh, China has always been able to like, enforce anything from top down. It's the way they function. It's, and it's worked well in the last 20, 30 years. Um, I think it could be, I think as long as there's incentive for people to see that they can get benefits out of it, they can have a better lifestyle, a higher lifestyle, um, earn more money, live more comfortably. I think as long as that incentive is there, people are happy to have uh, things imposed from top down. Um, at the West, I feel we're, it's, it's, it's a good mix. I'm not sure. However, yeah, I think Asia, Malaysia, for sure, I think it could be a good opportunity for them as well. Yes. Alizé Bouskar, I know you've been working hard to make this happen. Thank you for sharing your insight. We'll